Hi, I'm Paul, and in today's video, I'm going to explore how I've set up a powerful automation stack to enhance my Obsidian workflow through intelligent web scraping. I'll show you exactly how I'm using NADN, Claude Desktop, and other tools to stay focused and organized, plus give you some insights into costs and return on investment. If you're interested in AI and automations that actually save you time, this video is for you. Join me as I give you a sneak peek into my latest AI automation tools. Exploring Automation Tools Lately, I've been experimenting with some next level automation tools. They're not officially part of the Obsidian ecosystem, but they've unlocked workflows I didn't think were possible. I'm not ready to go deep on how I've set them up just yet, but I do want to show you what's been possible in just a short time. So a few months ago, I made a video called Automating Note Generation in Obsidian with Claude and MCP servers. I had a lot of fun making this video, and that's when I discovered the modal context protocol. Modal context protocol allows you to create a two-way connection between your data sources and AI power tools. Think of this like a trained agent who knows everything about the task you're about to give it. For the past week, I've been experimenting with NADN MCP tools, but it hasn't been all smooth sailing. The first roadblock was API usage costs. So Claude's free tier only gives you one MCP prompt per day before you hit your limit. And if you want to upgrade to the pro plan, it's 20 US dollars per month. Now I do have an API that I use for coding, but this is a pay as you go Anthropic API. And spoiler alert, it does cost a lot to run MCP tools with the API. So this week, my focus has shifted. Instead of making another Obsidian video, I've found myself deep in NADN automations, specifically using Claude for Sonnet. So I've started building two workflows. The first is to scrape YouTube daily to surface any Obsidian related videos from the last seven days. And I've done this because I've got sick of manually using the search filter and getting sucked down a rabbit hole every time I go to search for a new Obsidian video. The second workflow scrapes Reddit for the three most popular Obsidian posts each week. So I can keep a pulse on what the community is talking about without doom scrolling. So I'm not sure where it's heading yet, but it's been exciting and I'm learning a lot. It might turn into something bigger, but for now, I just wanted to bring you along for the ride and show you what I've discovered. N8N MCP Automation Showcase. So here I am inside of my home lab dashboard. Up at the top, I've got a tile for Proxmox, and this is a link to my Proxmox server. On my Proxmox server, I'm running some Linux containers and Docker containers. So down here, you can see I've got Docker. And then one of my containers is N8N Automations. And I've also got fresh RSS. So I'll start by going through N8N Automations, as that's been my focus this week access my automations, I just click the tile and that brings me to my workflows. So let's have a look at the Obsidian Reddit scrape workflow first. I'm just gonna left click this one and you can see in here I've got a N8N workflow. So up the top here I've got the details. So this one retrieves Obsidian Reddit posts over the last seven days. It extracts the transcripts and generates an AI powered summary and then it posts it to my Discord channel. To create this workflow, I was using the NADN MCP tool created by Zinlosky, and apologies if I've pronounced that incorrectly. And this MCP server provides an AI assistant with complete comprehensive access to NADN node documentation properties and operations. And it's pretty easy to set up. If we scroll down, there's a quick start guide here. But really all you need to do is make sure you've got Node.js installed on your system and then you can run it directly through the command line with mpx space and tag mcp. So I'll just launch my command prompt here. I'm just going to paste in that command and hit enter. So now you can see I've got the NADN mcp server running. So I can use this now inside Claude Desktop or VS Code. So if I just have a look at here at Claude Desktop, you can see down here I've got search and tools. And if I left click that one, you can see that I've got N8N MCP. 
and I've got 39 tools available. I've currently disabled the Obsidian MCV tools because I'm not using them. So let's just click onto this one and we can see all the tools that I've got available to me. So I can list tasks, get nodes, get node essentials, search templates, create NADN workflows, delete workflows, you get the idea. So if we have a look here up the top, you can see my original prompt was to create an N810 automation to scrape the Reddit subreddit Obsidian for top posts in the last seven days, then use Google Gemini to identify any interesting and useful things in Obsidian. And then I've sent that over to Claude and then Claude's used those MCP tools to output the JSON file for N8N. So we can see here, I had to do it three times in order to get it to work how I'd like it. Now, I originally used the free plan, but I was able to still get the workflow code. So you can see on the right hand side, I can download as text, or I can just copy all of this into VS Code. So the free plan will allow you to run this once every few hours. But if you're going to do it quite often, you'll definitely need the pro plan. Now it says $17, but it's actually about 21 US dollars, including tax per month. Another way you can do it is you could use the Claude for Sonnet API key. And I did a test inside of VS Code and you can see up the top here, I've got the same prompt. And this one used about 100,000 tokens. To create the same workflow, it cost me roughly one US dollars in order to write this workflow. And you can see it's outputted it here as a JSON file. So if we click that, we can see what that looks like. And what I did from there is I just imported that file into N8N and made some changes. So if I jump into Discord, we can see that I've got the channel here, Obsidian Reddit Scrape. So all I need to do is execute the workflow. You can see that it's only come back with one item. So let's go into Discord. So here's the Obsidian Analysis Report. So the date is the 2nd of August from the subreddit Obsidian and it's looking over the last seven days and it's analyzed 21 posts. So the top posts for the week were how do you take notes in Obsidian while watching videos? And then it's generated a few screenshots for me as well. So if I'm interested in any of these top posts, I can just left click and then go read about it. And then if it's more useful for me to capture this in my Obsidian Vault, then what I can do is I can come up to my Obsidian Web Clipper and use my Reddit post template in order to place it into my Vault Web Clippings folder. So I was quite satisfied with that result that I decided to do the same for YouTube. So if I click into this workflow here, you can see that this one is very similar. It will retrieve Obsidian YouTube videos from multiple channels that I follow over the last seven days, extracts the transcripts and generates an AI powered summary, and then it posts it to my Discord channel. And the reason I did this is every time I go to YouTube and type in the word Obsidian, I get shorts at the top that are not related to Obsidian. I also get videos about the Obsidian glass, and sometimes I'll get just videos with high views that I'm not really interested in. What I'm actually looking for is videos in the last week. So I have to go up to my filter, select this week, and then go down the list and try to find what I'm looking for. So the better thing to do was to create a scraper. And this one is scheduled to run every day at eight o'clock, and then I'll delete it at 10 o'clock at night. So I'll just run it now. So you can see it's found 120 items, but it's only filtering the last seven days. And then it's sending it over to my AI model. And there's only seven items to process. I'm using a Google AI Studio API key as the free tier limits are pretty generous and it's not going to cost me anything to run this workflow. So our workflow is completed. So I'll go back over to my Discord channel and then click on Obsidian YouTube Scraping. And we can see that Mike has posted a short on the 1st of August and there's a link here. It's the note making method that unlocks your creativity. So we'll scroll down, he's posted another one on weekly review system. He's also got one there managing writing projects in Obsidian and a how to get started with Obsidian. So Mike's had a pretty busy week with posting videos by the looks. 
So well done, Mike. Uh, we'll scroll down. We've got one from Sasha for mastering recall AI. So this is a service I use as well to get my YouTube summaries. And I use it in conjunction with the web clipper. Then we've got one from VLAD for tasks in Obsidian and also another one for Button. So it looks like it's posted that one twice for some reason. I'm not too sure why. So that gives me a quick snapshot of the Obsidian videos in the last seven days without having to go to YouTube. I can either manually delete these by executing this workflow down the bottom. So I can just execute that one. That's going to get all the posts inside of that Discord channel and then delete them all. So if I go back to Discord, they're now gone. So I've got a clean slate. So I run that automatically every day. And I've got one for AI as well. You know, there's other things I'm interested in besides Obsidian. So those two workflows saves me from searching on YouTube and getting distracted clicking on videos I never really wanted to watch and going down rabbit holes. It also saves me going to the Obsidian Reddit and scrolling down and trying to find what I'm looking for. Another service I use to filter out the information that I'm interested in is Fresh RSS. So I'll click on this one and that brings up my Fresh RSS feeds. So down the left hand side here I've got two for Obsidian. So I'll just expand those. The first one here is Obsidian Reddit. So this one will give me all the latest posts on Reddit about Obsidian. If there's something here that I find interesting, so you've got one here, anyone know if there is a plugin like this? That sounds interesting, I can click on it and then we can have a quick read of it. Let's say I have a few notes and have them titled and I have a note called hello and I wanna make a note called bye, will it link automatically? Okay, that's an interesting one, not something I can help with. Let's try have a look for something else. My writing vault color scheme. Okay, so this one just wants people's opinion. Dark or light looks better. Always dark, but let's see what everyone's saying there. They're both terrible. <laughs> yeah, they do. that does look pretty bad. Let's close that one. Uh, what else we got here? I made a plugin to track the countries you've visited. Okay, oh, that's pretty cool. Let's go have a look at that one. Ah, oh, very nice. Two days ago. So that's a useful one for finding Reddit posts without having to go to Reddit. I've got one for Obsidian Forums as well. So this one just saves me going to Obsidian Forums and then clicking help and then scrolling and trying to find something to help with. Although I don't mind doing that, but I've got one here where I can just find the title. So Obsidian doesn't open. Let's click that one. Trying to open Obsidian, it doesn't show up anywhere. And then 10 seconds and it closes. That's interesting. Click on that one. And then we can see the full thread, things that they've tried. So yeah, we can obviously help out here if we can, uh, or just read what everyone else has recommended. And the same goes for YouTube. So instead of using that N8N workflow I showed before, I could just go to Mike's channel here and then go through his posts. So I can see his beginner's guide there, how he organizes his creative projects. You can go check out what Nick is up to. So Nick's posted a video on the 21st of July. So if I'm interested in that, I can go watch that one. And then I've got other creators here that I've added. So it's just a good snapshot instead of doom scrolling YouTube to find what I'm trying to watch. One Deluts has got some good videos. So if I want to go check out what he's up to and just go, oh, I don't have One Deluts on there. Okay, so this is a good example. So let's go to One Deluts page. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to come over to more, scroll down, click on share channels, copy channel ID, and then I'm going to come back over to my fresh RSS and I'm going to go to subscription management and then I'm going to go over to Obsidian YouTube. I'm going to add feed, then I need to add the feed URL. So I'll paste the channel ID first and then all I need to do to add at the front is this URL here, youtube.com feeds videos dot xml question mark channel underscore id and then the id i'm going to put it in my category obsidian youtube hit add and the visibility will be shown its own category submit and now i should have wonder loots there so i'll go back to my feeds come down to my obsidian youtube go to wonder loots and now we can see this one here which is released recently so notebook lm features very good video recommend you go check it out uh, we've got new notebook lm features there it is there and we can read about what that one's about and if we're interested we can go have a look at it 
quick AI cost breakdown. So let's have a quick look at how much this cost me. So I started with Core Desktop on the free plan and I was able to run one Naden MCP prompt per day. So if I only needed to create one workflow per day, then I could quite easily do this on the free plan. If I needed to go back and forth with Claude, then I would potentially hit my limits and need to upgrade to the 20 US dollar per month pro plan, which gives me five times the use of the free plan. This also opens up the ability to create projects inside of Claude. The alternative was to use VS Code with Klein using the Claude Sonnet 4 API. And I found that I averaged about one US dollar per MCP prompt. So this would be a pay-as-you-go model. And I actually found the results to be almost better using VS Code. It's very similar and the user experience is different on both. So there you have it. That's what I have been working on this week. It's a little bit different than my usual Obsidian videos. If this is something that interests you and you'd like me to go into more depth in future videos, please leave your comments down below. Let me know what you'd like to see in future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.